Hey, hey, hey. All right, so now that the NBA Finals are done, all I have to say is, you know, what an NBA Finals. I know there's a whole lot of discourse about whether it was one of the best of recent history or one of the worst recent history, and to be honest, I, I could care less. I truly do not care about the comparisons made to other finals. All I care about is that I enjoyed these finals. I hope everyone else did too, because they were just really fun to watch and there were some great performances. And because we're on the topic and I don't plan on making a whole video dedicated to the Bucks and their future, I'm just going to rattle off some quick points. Giannis gave us an all-time performance both offensively and defensively, which makes it just that much better. Not to mention that, again, it was just a couple weeks ago that his leg bent backwards and it looked like he was going to potentially be out for the rest of the season, so just throwing that in there too just makes it all that much better. And if you're a Suns fan, or for some reason you're just not that happy that he succeeded, I think it's definitely still a fair point to make that he deserved this ring, this opportunity. He's put a whole lot of work in, and it's nice to see it finally pay off. As for Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton, although they were very, very inconsistent in this playoff run for the most part, they were amazing in their own aspects, and when they needed to step up, they definitely did, and just, you know, overall congrats to the Bucks. For the Phoenix Suns though, especially the fans, I'd imagine that this is probably a pretty bittersweet finale to an overall great season. If you go all the way back to last offseason, I'd imagine that there were very, very few people saying that the Suns would even make the playoffs, let alone be a two seed. But again, this Suns team persevered, they stayed healthy, which ended up being a pretty key thing in the season. And in the end, they pulled off one of the greatest and just overall quickest turnarounds in franchise history and just the NBA history in general. And you can say what you want about their playoff run. Obviously, they had Anthony Davis was hurt after game two for the most part. Nuggets were missing Jamal Murray and a few other players. Clippers were without Kawhi Leonard. And then they finally ran into the Bucks, who were healthy and they ended up losing. With that said, I still feel pretty confident in saying that this Phoenix Suns team could have taken any team in the Western Conference this season at full health at least to a seven game series. I'm not going to sit here and say that they would have definitively beat every team in the Western Conference, but I definitely think if you have them play every team in a best of seven series, I very much doubt that they get straight up swept by any of them. I think each one would be a very good series in its own way. I also think another good reminder for Suns fans is that outside of Chris Paul and Jay Crowder, every single player on this roster who got heavy minutes during this playoff run is still very, very young and has a bright future ahead of them. Devin Booker is only 24 and just barely starting to hit his prime. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him hit another level over these next couple of seasons and eventually make his way into the MVP candidate conversation for year after year. Then you take a look at DeAndre Ayton who's still only 22 years old, even younger, and he spent this entire playoff run just getting such valuable playing time and experience going up against some of the best bigs that the league has to offer. Against the Lakers, he got to match up with Anthony Davis, albeit only for a few games, it was still you know, some, again, great experience. He got a whole series where he was able to match up against the MVP of the season in Nikola Jokic and did a pretty handedly job. Then perhaps his toughest assignment was once the Suns got to the NBA Finals, he was tasked with guarding the eventual Finals MVP in Giannis Antetokounmpo. Obviously Giannis had his way for most of the series, but I don't think you could at all blame DeAndre Ayton for having the performance he did. He still did a relatively good job because again, he's only 22 and he's just getting started. Off the bench, you have guys like Campaign, who is a free agent going into this offseason, but he's only 26. I'd imagine that he's likely going to come back to the Suns considering they just made a pretty good finals run and a good bid at the title in general. He worked absolutely amazing as a one-two punch with Chris Paul, just being able to bring this sort of energy and just fast-paced play that Chris Paul is not able to bring anymore, and I think it works really well for the Suns team. And then they have Cameron Johnson, who's only 25, yet somehow is playing like he has 10 years of NBA experience under his belt, even though he's only played for two. And he's just another role player that's very easy to like, plays hard, plays well, plays smart, and you, you can just learn so much from watching Cameron Johnson play basketball. It's, it's ridiculously easy. But the main person that I really wanted to talk about and pretty much the inspiration behind making this entire video is Mikel Bridges. He himself is now 24 years old, just finished his third season in the NBA, and I cannot be more excited to see where he goes from here. 
I'm pretty sure that Suns fans have known for the longest, but I think Mikel Bridges really took the league by storm back during the NBA bubble. That's where he really started to make a name for himself. And I think a majority of people started to take notice, me included. That's pr that probably was the first time that I really noticed him as a potential breakout player. And at that point, he was regarded as one of the true and potentially elite 3 and D players in the league. Not necessarily a sniper at that point, but he's playing all defensive type defense and was just able to spread the floor and hit shots when needed. It was nothing too serious at the time, but there was definitely a lot of potential there. Then this past season comes along and he just takes a huge leap offensively while still maintaining his all defensive level defense. He saw his points per game go up from 9 to 13 and a half. He saw his three point shooting percentage increase from 36 to 42. Plus he just overall saw his uh, true shooting percentage increase from 62 to 67. But the reason why I've gotten so excited about Mikel Bridges, especially during this playoff run, is that it's not about the fact that he's just scoring the ball more efficiently, it's how he's scoring the ball. Like I said, at first when he started to break into the NBA scene, he was mostly seen on the offensive side of the ball as someone who would space the floor, stand on the three point line, catch and shoot and then just go play defense and that was his role but as the season went on he continued to expand his game he started taking guys off the dribble he started driving to the rack he started creating his own shots and he was really really good at it and listen i'm totally aware of the harmfulness that comes with comparing these young nba players to all-time greats and just superstars in general but i can't stop shaking the comparison out of my head that this is very reminiscent of how Kawhi Leonard made his name in the league. Both players come into the NBA as mostly defensive guys who have some offense, but not a whole lot, not a great jump shot, and just overall need to work on their offense a lot. Then across their first few seasons, they started to show more and more of an offensive game, which Kawhi Leonard has obviously ascended to a very, very high point in the offensive game. And I think that's something that Mikel Bridges could follow suit in. Plus, I know there's been a whole lot of talk already about what the Suns should do moving forward from here, whether that's adding a star, running it back with the same team, or just whatever path they want to go down. And while CP3's decision on what he's going to do with his player option will most likely alter whichever path Phoenix takes, I don't really care whether he accepts it, declines it, or declines it and signs a new deal with the Suns. None of that really matters to me. In the end, I think Phoenix's focus should be on keeping Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, and Mikel Bridges for as many years as possible. Because if you can lock down all three of those guys and build a big three, even past the point where that CP3 is on this team, I think that's all you're going to need for star power moving forward in a couple of years down the line. And yes, obviously that's assuming that Mikhail Bridges will continue his ascension past the point where he currently is, but again, I, I really do believe that this is something that is going to happen and could be the key factor for the Phoenix Suns' future. I think it's definitely a possibility that Bridges could eventually evolve not only his game in general, but specifically his scoring game and become such an advanced scorer that he could confidently be a second option on a championship team. And if you want to argue that and say there's no chance that will happen, I'll just point your attention to Chris Middleton. He was someone who probably for at least the first six years of his NBA career was probably told that he'd never be a number two on a championship team. Fast forward now to his ninth year and you know, here we are, he is the number two option on a championship team. So again, while I completely understand that you might be taken aback by the Kawhi Leonard comparison, I'm not saying they're going to be identical players, I just think that Mikel Bridges could ascend to at or around the same level of at least an all-star, superstar type player that Kawhi is, with both of them just being great defenders who are also able to go out and give you 24, 25 a night and just be able to be a number one or a number two piece on a team. And just all I ask is that y'all continue to watch Mikel Bridges play basketball because he really is a special player. He's already very talented as he is, but I just still think that there is so much more to his game that he's gonna be able to evolve and get to so many more levels that he can dig into and I, again i just i truly think he is just scratching the surface so again if i'm the phoenix suns i'm not going to be trying to do too much with the current roster obviously you have cp3 and his player option to make decisions on but once that era is done i feel very confident and comfortable in what i have with booker mikhail bridges and deandre ayton and then i think you build from there and who knows you could potentially have a dynasty at the end of the day again Mikel Bridges being the key to it all.